Today on Attack of the Show, Little Man. <laughs> the latest blockbuster from the Waynes Brothers. <laughs> then which of these will get you more of this? Plus, the guys... My name is Albert. Join the girls in your pants. There's like no lubrication, come on. All this and more on a live and totally original Attack of the Show starting right now. What's going on here? Attack. Big up on this. Attack. Attack. What's up, everyone? I'm Olivia Munn. And I am Kevin Pereira. We are live. And last night, I got a, I, I, I had some red wine, and I promised I was going to call Regis out today. Because I, I was watching America's Got Re Talent. Regis from, like, Regis? Like, the like Regis? Regis guy? Yeah, Regis the from? Regis. Okay. Which is okay for me to say, but now Regis is referring to himself in the third person. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, I, you, you were telling me that earlier. Like, Regis needs a break. Regis That's, can't believe he's on stage with all these idiots. Yeah, nice Regis, by the hey, way. Thanks. But it's just like, has he gone crazy, or is that a cool no. thing to do if you're a host, what? to like talk about yourself in the third person? <laughs> please don't do that. If that's, if that's where you're going, please gonna, don't do that. I'm going to actually start it off right now, if that's okay. <clears throat> the, oh. Ke the Kevin is very happy with Microsoft, by the way. Okay, Kevin, I'll, I'll play along. Why is that? You don't know why the Kevin's happy, happy with Microsoft? No, <laughs> the Kevin, no. The Kevin is very happy because Uno finally works, ladies and gentlemen. Uno, come on, two or three people. No. Okay, Thank Kevin, you. I didn't know you were still on the whole Uno thing. Microsoft released a patch. Uh -huh. uh, but there was a problem with the matchmaking. So essentially you go to play Uno, and I know that everybody's playing Uno late on a Wednesday night, drunk Everyone. on red wine. Yeah, Everybody sure. in the world. And so you go, and, but the matchmaking doesn't work. So it's like I say, I want to play, you say you want to play, but we don't but meet don't, up. But now they fix that. They fixed it. And to celebrate it, what are we doing, Mun? We're watching Uno live. That's the right. The entire beginning of the show. Let's fire it up. Can we get some Uno on the screen? Oh, hey, look at that. That was good. Nice Thank you. Cue. I, I, I cued it there. All right, so let's go to multiplayer game. Okay, this, is, this is what I know. This is my nightly ritual. So this is what you do. Yeah, we go to ranked match because, of course, we want everybody to know how much we suck at Uno. Kevin, what happened to the old card table with your grandma and grandpa playing Uno? Why are we? Why are you doing this online? Not high def enough. Okay. Yeah. All right. And uh, plus, it's much more entertaining to trash talk people when they're not your grandparents because then you don't have to hear about it for years to come. So as you can see, there we go. We found a lobby. Look, people are playing Uno. Yeah. That's awesome. I actually, I'm sorry. I just had a kind of a realization. This is why you're so cool, Kevin. <laughs> you're on TV. Add it to the you list. could be hanging out with the fast crowd, but no, you're at home playing Uno. Yeah, Uno and the internet. It's uh, it's kind of my blow. <laughs> well, right now, let's take that, wait, a look. Do you, do you hear that sax music? You hear it? And Did you interrupt me to talk about music? that? <laughs> Elevator music. That's what you it's listen like to. It's like Lethal Weapon. It's like that lonely sax player. I love it. I'm going to stop you right now. All right, fine. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at what <laughs> others do in their own time when we go around the net. First up, a story that will come as no surprise to anyone. Lindsay Lohan was caught giving a hummer to some dude <laughs> on film. Yeah, don't get too excited. That was actually a, for a role in a movie. Aww. Not a Paris Hilton-style sex tape. Oh, that's um, weak. Oh, what, look, wow, look at that. That guy looks all scraggly, too. Maybe she's but... trying to get the last of the blow-off his keys in his wallet. <laughs> I mean, that's something Lindsay would do, you right? Act, yeah. Well, you know what? I actually love how bored the guy looks. Very, right? yeah, he really He's is. like, I'm getting a Hummer or whatever. <laughs> like, dude, I need a cigarette. Where, where'd I leave him? Well, hey, would you actually, um, would you ever hook up with Lindsay? Out of curiosity? Yeah, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a real big fan of penicillin, so yeah, I'd hook up with Oh, him. my gosh. Do you think that she'd actually be good at going downtown? I, I don't know. I, I'm just glad that she's finally getting some protein. I mean, the girl, uh, the girl needed to beef up. I mean, may, she was, she was real she, Hopefully she spits. I bet, right? Oh, why? You don't want her to bulk up? Oh, my gosh. I like her she weighing like 95 it. pounds and looking like I could blow her over. Okay, moving on. All right. <laughs> moving on. Next up, the good folks at Modern Drunkard Magazine have chosen their uh, top 10 drinking movies of all time. And there's really nothing better than grabbing a six-pack and watching these booze-soaked touchstones of cinematic goodness. Making the cut this year were films like Animal House, Bad Santa, Strange Brew, and of course, Drunken Master. Drunken Master. <laughs> yeah. No, there's some classics there. Do, yeah. do you have any favorite like dr drinking films? Um, Passion of the Christ. What? I, I take a drink every time Jesus gets whipped, and I get wasted. That's a good game. Do you start with wasted. water and then move on to wine? Or? I do. I do do just that. It's You're a Patron clever. girl. I know this from experience, actually. <laughs> Patron. I love Patron. Can't and handle lime. it, though. It doesn't salt. love you. By the way, still looking to join a game. I don't know if you see it right there. Still looking join. to join a game, Uno. Awesome. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and finally today, don't you hate it? 
when food gets stuck in your throat oh, a little yeah. bit earlier, actually like kind of coughed up something. Well, you guys, here's a snake with that a very same problem. Only, listen to this, the food is a freaking baby hippo. Is that like a euphemism or? No. Okay, snake, Wait. I get it. Look, it's, it's a, a snake. snake. Look, Holy! It's a freaking baby <laughs> hippo. That's awesome. It looks like it's giving birth. Uh, it does, right? Look, something's popping Okay, now here's my there. question. When he spits it back out, obviously he didn't eat it. So, like, right. is it dead? I don't, I don't is know. Is that how it works? The, the, the most important thing here is that the snake has obviously no gag reflex at all. So, apparently, <laughs> he's taken lessons from Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> it's that, incredible looking. Um, I think I'm actually just going to go ahead and throw up a hippo right now. That actually, my my jaw actually unlocks like that, too. Just in case you guys wanted to know. She got the job, folks. <laughs> now, remember, go to attackoftheshow.com for the links to everything that you just saw. Now, sure. World War III might have just started today, but here's what really matters. It's Layla Kaylee with the feed headlines. Thanks, Kevin. Here's what's coming your way in the feed. Pretend to be excited, please. There's one last thing your Sony PSP can do, especially if you shop at Target. Keep it here for all the details. Plus, there's rumors that Tim Burton's new project will be based on a video game. And the best part is, it might not even suck. And when they're not busy headbutting Italians, the French are actually doing cool stuff with computers. All this and more coming up in the feed, but first, back to the couch. Thank you, Layla. For the record, the, uh, the Uno had to be restarted entirely. We just completely we, lost the ability so to play So many people came on to play when they, they were watching us. It was just it too is, much to uh, hold. It is one of the single greatest games ever. Ever? Console, card, or otherwise. You're I a liar. All right. <laughs> Let's check in with our old buddy, Zach Selwyn, right now. He's sitting... <laughs> All right. Zach. Ah, uh, that's disgusting. What's, what's the good word over there? Good word, Mun, is you need to calm down. Because I didn't know if you knew this, but uh, I moonlight as a bit of a rock star in the oh. off season. You mean like uh, like Chris Martin or Bono or those guys? No, like Zachariah Hedonistic. Ah, impressive. Oh. Impressive, Zach. Nice. Do you, but do you live the rock and roll lifestyle, though? Yeah, man. I mean, I've been known to throw a TV off a hotel balcony or okay. go to town with a groupie and a mud shark. Okay. You know, it's all <laughs> happened. I got some stories to tell. You take them to task. Yeah, I'm gonna write my scar tissue book in like 15 years down the road after the heroin addiction. You know that oh, whole that'll thing. Be great. I'll totally buy that. Well, you know what? You'll be able to get a preview of what I'm gonna be living and the way I do my life when I play with my band right here, Zachariah and the Lobos Riders later on in the show. Very excited. It's like it's. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It's kind of like Ramstein meets Chameleonaire. Yes, it's uh, <laughs> it's Eric Sermon meets Towns Van Zant. Fantastic. You know, I gotta say, you know, Zach was on yesterday. And did the whole mentalcalypse? Yeah, the mentalcalypse. Right? Yeah. And now he's like in this band thing. He's got a whole different energy to him. He's very kind of crazy, and I love I dig it. it. I dig it. I dig it. Sexy. Peyote, my friend. Peyote. Oh. <laughs> all it takes. Open your mind. It's all legal in Mexico, kids. All right. So we all know Chick uh, digs rock stars. That's yeah. that we get. Zach has a line of groupies outside the dressing room every That's day. That's true. But ever since the Ford Model T, women have also gone for the guy with the hottest car, right? I mean, yeah. Is there a particular well, car that, that drove into your pants that got you uh, going? Drove in my pants. Revved your engine, uh, so to speak. Well, I, I did date a guy with a modified Chevy van once, oh, yeah. and uh, I actually am remembering now the um, <laughs> the vibrations on that thing. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> if the uh, let me tell you, if the vans uh, are rocking, don't come a knocking, right, Olivia? <laughs> Cock a doodle doo, bitches. <laughs> okay, let's just stop. That's right. Okay, let's uh, just move on from that. Let's hear what the audience thinks. Time for the poll question. All right. Can the kind of car you drive get the poontang or is it just trying too hard? Do you like how I said it that? It like it hurt you to say it, to be honest. Because <laughs> I thought it was poontang. I didn't know it was with an N. It's now kind of know. odd. It's a hard N. <laughs> yeah, vote on our website at attackoftheshow.com <laughs> or via text message. Text your vote to G4TXT. That's 448. Uh, Uno's still not going, by the way. 44898. Sorry, it's right 44898 <laughs> to vote and register for AOTS Live News. Come on, Uno! Oh. All right, we'll be back. Time to floor the gas. Vroom, vroom, bitches. Whoa. Next, can the right car really get you late? And later, it's getting really crowded. Anal six. In your pants. Stay tuned for more. Anal six. Attack of the show. Attack of the show. Attack of the show. Attack. Welcome back to Attack of the Show. We are live and talking hot cars. Before the break, we asked you, can the kind of car you drive get you the poontang? I'm laughing because I can't believe I actually have to say poontang. Well, 69% of you said, hell yeah, the kind, of car, <laughs> the kind of car you drive can get you poontang. I can't believe I have to say this so much. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm in... <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, thanks, Olivia. Appreciate it. Well done, sweetheart. It's okay. You'll get there. Uh, so if you're not getting any tail, there could be numerous reasons. Your D&D &D weekends, your obsessions with Princess Leia, your unhealthy crush on that girl on Xbox Live, your inability to say poontang. But what about your car? Can you get a cool car with a, with a cool chick or no? Is it just a sure sign that you're a jerk who's in debt? Experts are here. It's time to peel out for the poontang. Today in the loop. The wheels are off, kids. Sorry. Joining us from Los Angeles, Alex Pico from West Coast Customs. Also in the City of Angels, we've got Giselle Lopez, a.k.a. Miss Hot Rod, from Hot Rod Magazine. And host of Street Fury and our very own car expert, Big C, is with us today. Folks, thanks for joining us in the loop. Big C, i got to start with you, sir, because I know, I mean, you are our resident expert here. So where where'd you lose your automotive virginity? What, what ride was it, Big C? Um, I'm going to have to tell the truth, Kev. It was a stretch limousine, man. You made it sound like this was a painful revelation, but that's a, not a bad place to lose it. Well, I wasn't driving, and since I wasn't driving, I could be drinking, and, you know, it, it's a great story. I'll tell you one day. Except, well, right now would be fantastic, but what about, what about Giselle? You've got a lot of experience with cars. Any, any backseat experience? For well, any, I'm not sure about the backseat, but definitely in the front seat, behind the wheel, in control. Wow. <laughs> and what, wow. The car was in park, I'm hoping. No, you know, it was moving very fast. As you're driving, is better, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, as you're driving, is better. Alex, you, you prefer to get down while you're actually rolling? That's right. <laughs> now, now, okay, Giselle, what car was it for you, your first time? Oh, it was the C6 Corvette, recently. Oh, man, these are nice Re cars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I have, like, a busted Hertz rent-a-car. This is, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Alex, what about you? Tell me, tell me you had something cool. <laughs> I just lost it. Sorry about that. Back of the chopper? Or was it? <laughs> it was actually on the hood, so. <laughs> All right. The first time I wasn't driving, the first time I wasn't driving was on the hood, but the second time was driving. But it wasn't so. like a Ford Focus or anything, right? I mean. No, it was a Chevy truck. All right, there we go. On now, where's the hood of the truck, though, Alex? I, I want to know about the hood, because I'm looking to do that one day. <laughs> Come on, help we'll Big talk, C out we'll here. We'll talk later. All right. Now, 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 Big C, what kind of women actually go for a guy with a nice car? I think all types of women go for guys with nice cars, especially because it's like the shoes that you're wearing or if you're in a nice suit, it's an extension of the man. So I think the nicer the car, mm, probably the prettier or the taller the woman you might get. But okay. you're not the always in the your gold car. digger she'll be. See, that's true. <laughs> now, that's, that's an interesting point, Alex, because it could just, I mean, it's an extension of the man, but it's also a reflection of the wallet, is it not? I mean, exactly. So, so Alex, do you, do you have a nice car to get a nice girl? No, I don't have a nice car at all, but I got a nice girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, without, Giselle, Giselle, it's what's... me that gets the, the girls. It's not the car, you know. Well, but. I have to, I don't know. For me, I think it just has to go with, if you have a guy who drives a Ford Taurus and a guy who's in a new Mustang or a Corvette, I think the women are going to veer more towards the guy with the faster car and the bigger engine. Really? As far as the, the yes. Now, don't don't women sure. believe he's compensating for something? Or? In some cases, yes. But the real car lovers out there, like myself and a bunch of other guys like Alex, I'm sure we can appreciate it all. What uh, happened to personality? I, I think they might compensate for a big <laughs> wallet. You know what I mean? If you can afford it, why shouldn't you have it? This is true. But, but now, Big C, you wouldn't be worried that, let's say, you've got a nice sports car. You spend 160 Gs on the Maserati. Aren't you worried that a girl might like you only because you have that car? Little man syndrome. <laughs> I don't know about the something. little man syndrome, <laughs> dog, because I'm is. Big C, but... It's always, I might only like her for one thing, too, so fair exchange isn't a robbery. Right, <laughs> it's go. always a small guy with the biggest <laughs> truck. It's always the poorest guy with the most expensive car. That's but now, now what about the girls, though? Is it, now, Alex, let me ask you, because I know you're around a lot of cars a, a lot at the time. Are there girls who like guys with trucks specifically? Are there sports car girls, or is it just about the price of the ride? No, there, there, you got your, your class of girls. You got your truck girls, you got your sport car girls, you got Giselle that likes the Corvette Z, Z06, you know, you got... You, you got your classes. You of got girls. the girls who like yeah. the hood only. It doesn't matter what it is. It's just cold metal. <laughs> you got your gold diggers. You got your. Uh, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. Fair enough, Alex. <laughs> yeah. All right. Giselle, I want to start with you because I want to go down with all three of you here yes. and figure out what car I should be driving tonight. I'm going down Sunset Boulevard. Giselle, what's going to get your eye? Well, you know, again, with that C6 Corvette, it got me, so might do you well. So you're still a fan of the C6? I'm still a fan of the C6. All right, Alex, what about you? What's, what's the car that's going to get the ladies for me tonight? I'd say a pink S-Class with some black wheels. That'll get the girls. Really? For sure. All right. Uh, Big C, you have the final word, sir. I agree with Alex, but I'm going to step off on my own. I'm telling you, Kevin, if you're not driving, you're having fun. Take a limo. 
And if you want to drive, <laughs> take a Bentley Coupe. All right, done and good call, done. Good call. All right, so yes, cars may get you laid, but you, you might be better off avoiding the Bentley and blowing your hundred grand at the ranch. At least you don't have to worry about <laughs> expensive maintenance and oil changes, etc. Thanks to Alex Giselle and Big C Thank for keeping you. us all in the loop. It was a pleasure, folks. Back to Olivia. <laughs> Still ahead, we'll give you steamy advice on how many times a week you should be having sex when I go in your Just pants. Say it, say it, say it for me. Plus, we talk midgets and ass beatings with the Wayans brothers when Attack of the Show attacks. Say the P word. Poontang! <laughs>to attack of the show we're live and we're basic cables leader of nothing absolutely nothing kevin i have to tell you something man i can't stop thinking about sex it happens you on know? a show like this yeah i mean i just wish that there were two hot chicks sitting around in orange chairs yapping about the camel toe shuffle between the sheets mm. actually you're in luck zach yeah let's go over to olivia <laughs> thanks guys not only is the camel toe shuffling it's doing a chorus line of kicks time to unzip because i'm going in your pants Hey everyone, this is Anna David. You guys know her because she writes sex advice for um, people like Playboy and stuff and magazine Razor, so many magazines. Basically, yeah. she's like your um, hot school nurse who gives you condoms and lets you sleep in the bed when you're <laughs> sick. Yeah, so um, you guys listen up. She's going to give you some sex advice. Guy number one has kind of a trust issue thing going on. Hey girls, it's Bob. How do you tell if a girl is cheating on you? Well, I think a lot of it is instinct. Mm -hmm. A lot of it. Yeah. But I, we're not predisposed to cheat as much no. as men. It's just a fact. They did a survey, and men cheat twice as often as women. It's 22% yeah. versus 11%. But you know, nowadays, like so many, I know so many girlfriends who they almost because guys did it so much before it's like they almost come up with a that it's okay to do it or right it's not this that is bad their payback or whatever well, it's like you know okay for well, i think the best way to find out if a, a girl's cheating on you is like like if i was cheating on you i'm like i'm a really great girlfriend so i hang out all the time and we're always hanging out right but if all of a sudden i don't want to go to a movie or i don't want to do like i don't want to like I, you can't get me on the phone you know, well, it's there's like the scene, that, but right? girls can also be very sneaky. I mean, we can be really hard to read. Yeah. So a lot of girls, I think, I'm not a cheater, so I don't really know from mm -hmm. personal experience, but a lot of girls, I think, might feel guilty and sort of lay it on a little thicker, like, oh, honey, oh. that's so great, out of guilt. You know how guys typically, like, if they're cheating, the, the cliche is that they'll bring home roses? Yeah. You know, so girls, girls can do, do that. Think. Yeah. But I think... I think you got to listen to your instinct, and you got to not be paranoid. I have dated a guy. Then you end up cheating on you because if you're so paranoid, I'm it can like, be I a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Absolutely. I dated a guy who was like, I know you're cheating. I know you're cheating, and it basically made me feel so suffocated. I wanted to cheat. Yeah. You know. So basically, follow your instincts. Don't get too paranoid, but look out for the signs because they're pretty obvious. And we are bad liars, women. We, we are just bad. Are. Oh, I'm a great liar. I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about. All right, the next guy up isn't sure if he's reaching his weekly quota. Yeah, I've been going out with this girl for six months now, and uh, we only have sex twice a week. Is that high or low? Low. That's low. Really good. I'm glad you think the same. We What's agree. high for you? Um, for me, well, I think. Oh, like what do you think okay, is look, high? Okay, look. If you're if you're newly dating somebody. And I consider six months kind of newly dating somebody. Yeah. The idea is that you're doing it all the time. I know, all the time. But then again, six months is also that point where it's kind of getting to be routine. Yeah. The, the national average is really depressing. It's like 1.84, but that's including but all those people that viewers, are married for 30 our years. Our viewers are hot young guys, so... They are? Yeah, they are. They are. Good. I've seen them on my MySpace page. They're hot and young. Yes, the, the ones who email me are, too. Oh, good. Well, I think... Um, Sex once or twice a day is awesome. I, like, that's that's, that's a hard thing to keep up. Really? I, mean, I think the question is, why is it only twice a week? Are you initiating and is the girl turning oh. you down? Um, you know, maybe she works really long hours. Maybe, you know, maybe somebody, maybe she's not as attracted to you as she should be. Oh. Maybe she's cheating. Maybe she's cheating. I'm but cheating. I'm I would, I'm I would not worry so much about what everyone else is doing. I mean, there's... Well, if you think it's low, it's low, right? Yeah, that's probably true. All right. Okay, our last guy has no problems keeping his hands to himself. I live with my girlfriend, but I still sneak around and masturbate. Is there something wrong with me? <laughs> Hell no. 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 They did a survey. 85% of men who live with a partner are also masturbating, and I think that other 15% okay. is lying. Here's my question, though. 
Um, it's my own personal question yes. to Anna David. Yes. When guys masturbate all the time, can they still be able to orgasm as easily? Yeah, absolutely. They're like they don't run out like for the day. <laughs> I'm not kidding. A certain allotment. They, there might be less semen uh -huh. in, you but they know. can they can still like get hard and get it up. And... Yeah, it depends on their age and their virility. Yeah. But yeah, no. And I think that I think it's just completely normal to masturbate, and especially for men. Um, it's not like you're cheating on your girlfriend. It, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. And I think that like if it's to the exclusion of anything else, if you're watching internet porn and masturbating and not so having sex with your girlfriend, so that's So even a portions of masturbation and sex, and we're good to go. Yeah. All right. No one knows this, but our secret superpower is answering your sex and relationship questions. So send them in, guys. Just go to geek4tv.com slash video voicemail. And you can, of course, find out so much more about Anna David at annadavid.com. Listen, first off, if you have a girlfriend you're still lubing up alone and chatting with the man in the canoe, you, you might have some problems. Yeah, my guess is that his girlfriend doesn't have the equipment he likes. So just go out and buy a new pair of Elton John glasses and start living la vida loca, Johnny Cakes. <laughs> Next, little man's about to blow up the big screen. Goo -gig -gig. Plus, an update from our favorite power couple, the traveling Morans. I am so tired. Attack will be right back. Attack. Welcome back to a live attack of the show where we give it to you like a porn star on coke. <laughs> That's right. And the high continues because it's live music Thursday presented by Denty Nice. And we have a very special treat for you guys today. Our very own Zach Selwyn's band, Zacharias and the Lobos Riders, are I here. Them. I love them. Now, I love them. swap out white chicks and uh, toss in a black midget, and then you have another high-concept film extravaganza from the Waynes Brothers. Recently, Chris Gore sat down with the stars of Little Man and talked Munchkin. Aww. Oh, my God. It's a baby. Kukukeke. Little Man is the timeless tale of a midget jewel thief who passes himself off as a toddler to a young and gullible married couple. Hey, yo, Percy. It's me. Can you get the diamond? No, not yet. I'm in time out. Stars Marlon and Sean Wayans have already turned themselves into white chicks, so I had to find out what it was like to become father and son. Being that I have a child was kind of, I have two, uh, it, it kind of helped me for the role, it helped me prepare. I, being that I changed some stanking diapers and I fed some little nasty babies, you know, and I beat some ass. Hey, hey, hey. I, I'm sorry. But, uh, <laughs> He's adorable in a National Geographic sort of way. Is it more fun being a white girl or a baby? Neither. A little white Neither? baby is the most fun. And white baby is the most fun. And they get treated baby. special. <laughs> Good morning. You were an animal last night. You've never done that before. <laughs> in terms of the acting, yeah. did you act with a midget or how did you do those scenes or just nothing there there was a young man who was nine years old and was a little person his name was Lyndon and he actually did all of the scenes so Sean and I were acting with Lyndon how did you do the special effects putting Marlon's head on a little person's body it was very challenging um, there's like 800 effect shots in this movie which is more than King Kong and Jurassic Park combined. <laughs> Although the babies in this comedy are suspiciously mature, the jokes refreshingly are not. Anybody who has kids know that kids do three things, eat, sleep, and poop. <laughs> so you can't get away from doing a movie about a baby without having some of that. And one for the baby. <laughs> I could have sworn he just stuck his tongue in my mouth. <laughs> you can never go wrong with a midget. Really. No, you can't. Little Man opens tomorrow, so watch out, pirates. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right now, though, here's the news you should care about in today's feed. Uh, Layla, <laughs> got a lot of email. Really? About yesterday's episode when you said you, you don't wear a bra. Like, <laughs> yes. What's, what's the deal? Why is that? You know, would you want to wear a cot strap every day? I mean, seriously. Well, I, I, okay, yeah. I have smaller breasts, and mm -hmm. I still wear a bra. Now, I, you you know when you have larger breasts you usually have to wear a bra. You know honestly boobs I don't understand the big deal there's so much going on in the world 
boobs are boobs, everybody. They're just right. boobs, for Christ's sake. Well, I don't you know? think anyone's opposing it. We're just no, wondering. They, like, they all taste the same. It's they fine. all <laughs> taste the same. Everyone has one. I just like mine to breathe a little bit. I don't like them to feel restricted. Understandable. You. Understandable. You understand? All right, I'm glad we got that straight. I'm Leila Cayley, your own personal British news reader. Now on your mark, get set, feed. <laughs> Most people stopped caring about UMD movies the minute Sony released the PSP. But now, a year later, Target has jumped on the bandwagon, saying it will no longer carry movies in that format. This makes sense because I don't know a single person who's ever used the PSP to watch movies, especially when they only release whack titles like Hitch and Gone in 60 Seconds. The city where you can buy a primer of dinner for $2 or rent a hooker for $200 is upset at a video game. That's right. Las Vegas city officials are annoyed at Tom Clancy's upcoming Rainbow Six title because it features the city being taken over by terrorists. They are even going so far as to try and block the release of the game. But even Sin City might not have the strength to stand up to crazy soldiers with guns. I guess what happens in Vegas stays in Rainbow Six. He's already remade Planet of the Apes and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and now Tim Burton has set his sights on a video game. Well, maybe. The rumor is Burton will be tackling the big screen adaptation of Grim Fandango. You know that LucasArts game from the late 90s about skeletons? Well, it's right up Tim Burton's alley, so maybe he'll do a good job. Imagine that, a movie based on a video game? That might not suck in my dreams. The French government is finally doing something cool instead of just surrendering to Germany or not invading Iraq. France will now be giving computers and a high-speed internet connection to low-income families for only one euro a month. Pretty nice, eh? Like even the poorest people in town can enjoy surfing for porn all day long. I love porn. And finally, once you pop, you can't stop, especially when your Pringles are made of crack. A drug dealer in Austin, Texas, was arrested for trying to distribute crack cocaine, but the best part is he tried to disguise the drugs as a, in a can of potato chips. Bet you can't eat just one, hmm? And that's today's feed. For even more news and info, check out g4tv.com slash the feed. Those guys are busy updating all day long with the stories I didn't even have time to get to. So do yourselves a favor and check it out. Now put down those crack Pringles and say no to drugs because you just been fed. Back to you, Kevin and Olivia. Thanks, Layla. Now, Sarah Lane and Brenda Moran, the former hosts of Attack mm -hmm. of the Show, they're on a year-long journey around the world. And what's Very exciting. What's incredible is that they actually, they're spending their entire life savings that is true. doing it. It's an adventure yeah. of a lifetime. And here's part one, folks. Catch up. They're in Greece. Well, hello, everyone. How are you? My name is Sarah Lane. This is Brenda Moran. If you don't know us, we are formerly of G4's Attack of the Show. That's right, and you're in luck because we have started a round the world year long trip. And we're going to show you our adventures. So, right now, we are in a Greek island called Santorini. Santorini is known for the world's best sunsets. That's what they say. Do you guys know where the sun sets? Is this where the sun sets? So it sets here. This is yeah, where. Yeah, it sets here, right? Okay. What are you eating? Pretzels. Can I have one? It's just gonna go right into the ocean. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Cool. I've never seen that before. What do you think about these Better dogs? Point. Little kind of quite romantic spot, yeah. Well, I don't blame them. Let me tell you a little something about Ia. There are no escalators. There are, however, four and a half million stairs, and every one of them you must walk just to get from here to there. Sarah's not really helping matters much either. Come on, honey, we're gonna be late for our dinner reservation. God, I am so tired. One thing that may surprise you actually in Greece is that there are a lot of Attack of the Show fans. Attack of the Show? Is that why you're here? No? Attack of the Show? Yeah? Thanks for watching. Attack of the Show? Good to see you. Do you want a picture or anything like that? Do you want to get a picture with me? You need an autograph? You don't, you don't need one? Okay. Well, that's it from beautiful Santorini, Greece. Coming up next, we go to Turkey, where we don't speak the language or know any of the local customs. And I heard their toilets aren't Western. I don't... What does that even mean? I think we're going to find out. <laughs> I didn't know we had so many fans Your in kids. Greece. We're, we're big all over. <laughs> all right, there's more to come from the Morans. We'll be checking in with them periodically. And if you just can't get enough of the couple, visit brendanandsarah.com. Stay with us. We, they're, they might be in love. Um, there might be love connection in the air. That, uh, 
Actually, that monitor head back there keeps looking at me. Kind yeah. of funny. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Next, get the inside scoop on the hottest new comics, including Ultimate Spider-Man. It's fresh ink. Don't go away, or Attack of the Show will kick your ass. The feed was brought to you by Cooper Tires. Don't give up a thing. Welcome back to a live Attack of the Show. G4's Icons is a day in the life of today's pop culture institutions, and this week we're talking Clerks 2 and Kevin Smith. Everyone knows Kevin Smith is a very funny filmmaker, but what you might not know is how quick he is on his feet. This means the world to me. It kind of makes up for every chick that ever told me I had a small dick. So, I grew up fat. And when you're fat, you don't have a lot to offer the world in terms of the aesthetic. You can't kind of get over it. When Silent Bob speaks, everyone is fair game. Himself, his church, his fans, and his wife, Jen. I get to slack off during sex because I'm a bottom, she's a top. But To see him go up on stage and tell an audience of 4,000 about our sexual escapades, it, it took a bit getting used to. Kevin Smith has built a huge cult following and he invites icons into his world. Watch as we travel with him to the Cannes Film Festival and preview his summer sequel, Clerks 2. It's Icon Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Right now, let's go on over to Kevin. Thanks, Olivia. Spinning webs of intrigue and climbing the walls of comics, Blair Butler is here and she's giving superhuman reviews to some fresh ink. <laughs> Ms. Butler, pleasure to have you back. Hey, good to be back. Let's start uh, things off rocking number one. Yes, rocking number one. Is it a barbarian story, you know, or is it a death metal band from the 80s? It's, it's a barbarian <laughs> it's death tale. death clock yes. in a food library. Exactly. Um, it, this is a, it, it, basically if you've read Conan the Barbarian, you have read this comic. Um, but... What sets it apart is this really amazing artwork yeah. uh, that's by uh, Nick Bradshaw and inked by this guy whose last name I cannot pronounce, but it's Jim Charla Shempedes or something. And um, what I love about it is that it looks like Disney, but totally gory. Like this looks like a, like a almost like the Dragon's Lair, like the you know, that Don Bluth kind of animation. Yeah, it starts off like a feel-good barbarian story, and then yeah. gets real bloody real fast. Yeah, it gets it gets really dark, um, and you know. I, I just I love looking at this art. I think it's 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 great because it's almost got this innocent quality, like this sort of classic animation right. innocence. But then it's so violent. But um, you did say it at the beginning. It is Conan. So right. artwork aside, with the plot in mind, what right. would be the verdict on something like this for comic fans out there? Well, you know, it's it's new intellectual property, but it's so similar to Conan down to you know the guy gets stronger by like pushing heavy things around yeah. to get revenge. Um, that uh, it's just going to get a browse. But I have to say that artwork is really sweet. And so you keep an eye on the series because it yeah. could get a lot better. It's it brand new, right? It definitely could. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. It's only the first Second issue. up, folks, we have Ultimate Spider-Man number ninety-seven. Yes. Now. Everybody freaked out when Spider-Man got unmasked, and the great thing about this series is that Ultimate Spider-Man is always going to be that Peter Parker, um, you know, he's wearing the mask and he's having problems with girls, and, and one of the best things about this issue, he has a little fight with his girlfriend. Um, really well written fight, by the way. Yeah, yeah, and, and this is Brian Michael Bendis, who's an author I love, and everyone's like, oh, Blair, you're a Bendis fangirl. Here's the thing, I actually am not a fan of this series, and this issue starts the Clone Saga, which for comic book fans in the 90s, the Clone Saga is like one of the most notoriously bad comic book uh, like plot developments it's a, it's for Spider-Man. Yeah. They, they cloned Spider-Man and it was so bad, but it sold really well. And so and so people, you know, got all excited about it. There was this horrible Scarlet Spider thing. So anyway, in this comic, oh, my gosh, he's got a clone again. And I'm like. Then the ultimate line is sort of like, it's like that, that beautiful baby that hasn't been tainted by like <laughs> unmaskings and stuff. And you're like, no, no clones. 
Well, no, no is this, uh, sh should we should we support this child? Should people buy, browse, or burn this baby? I, I think they. You should. like burning babies, so I mean, I, it's okay to say. You know, I am I am an infant uh, <laughs> flamer, but I I have to say, uh, it's just a browse for me, ah. um, because you know I'm curious to see where it goes, but it's just it's just kind of not quite doing it for me. All right, two browsers. Give them something right. good to read. Give, a, okay. give them like a quick pick that All they right. should definitely go pick up. There. I have a little quick pick for you. This is called The Escapists, and uh, basically what it is, it's um. It's by Brian K. Vaughn, who's one of my favorite writers. The thing I like about this, it's only a buck. It's only a buck, and it was already published in a larger anthology, but it's starting an ongoing series. This is really a comic book about writing comic books. So it's by comic nerds for comic nerds about comic nerds. So they if you're a comic it. nerd like me, you're probably going to dig this. If there was ever a comic you'd recommend, it'd be one with that tag. <laughs> nerd, I'm There you have it, folks. The Escapist is a buy. Thank you, Blair. Thank Thanks you. For Thanks so much. for having me. Look, folks, if you can't get enough of Blair and her awesome muscles, this July, Attack of the Show will be coming to you live from the biggest nerd event in the world. The world Comic Con. That's right, 100,000 rabid fans, 1,000 new comics and even movie trailers, 100 Hollywood A listers, and of course, 10 fat guys dressed as Wolverine. Attack of the Show is going to be there live to give you the scoop on everything. Attack of the Show, folks, we present Comic Con 06 Live Friday, July 21st at 8 p.m. Eastern. That's next Friday, folks, so set your team though. Cancel your plans. You probably had none if you're interested in Comic Con. Don't worry. But don't go anywhere in the meantime. Zachariah and the Lobos Riders are here live. They rock. You don't want to miss them, and they're next. What's going on here? Please welcome my new favorite band and my Uncle Jim, Zachariah and the Lobos Riders! A vaquero, a bottle of moonshine beneath my sombrero I drink and fight and sing and ride along Been doing this from time, commit crime like riser I'm before my time, I smoke and cuss and I probably won't live too long But people come up time and time again and say Don't you belong on ESPN But I tell them piss off cause I'm a country singer well, not like the stuff on the radio till the outlaw days when my songs go all lanes like Bob Dylan, you'll end up like Kip Winger. Ha ha! And I ain't gonna do just what they want me to. And you think that I'm the crew, you can turn and walk away. Yeah, turn and walk away. Leader, nothing sweeter. I got through high school because I'm a cheater. I became a man on a Tucson barroom floor. When women call my hotel room just trying to get in my fruit of the loom. I invite them in and leave a bandana on the door. I push an old green pickup truck, it barely runs, but that's my luck. Antique plate shining in the desert night. I picked up a dude just off I-10 I pretended to like him like I was his friend I robbed him blind and left him in court sight
Uriah, the rhyme messiah. I go to Fort Collins to drink fat tire. Outlaw desert hobo with no dinero. I move on through that blue horizon. Spend my hours agonizing. Solve the problems with a silver pistol arrow. Well, I had the cash placed in my hand. The front of softer country band. But I told them where they could all shove their dollar. And in New York City, I shed a tear. Paying nine bucks for a Texas beer. I'm going back to where they all stay blue collar. for more information. Stay right where you guys are. We're talking to you in the modern heads about Mustangs when we come back. Let's make it out. If you haven't been watching Attack of the Show, this is what you're missing. Welcome back, everybody. We are live, rocking out. Of course, we're talking to you. Yes. Zach, now you, um, you have a new CD. Where can we find it and what's the name of it? Well, a new CD is called Alcoholiday, and that's coming out very <laughs> soon. So that one, look for that one online. Otherwise, just go to myspace.com slash Zachariah and the Lowest Rider. It's really small URL there. All there right, we go. Great. All right, first off, we have Jarvis from Oklahoma. Jarvis. Hey, guys. So what do you think? Biodiesel or hybrids? Biodiesel? Mm. Biodiesel? Is that a computer question? <laughs> which, one, which one kills the most animals? Um... Biodiesel. Biodiesel really? it is. No, that's the vegetable oil one. Right? Yeah, they're all they're both actually healthy. And I think the go with hybrid because it's easier for you. You don't that's have to I go think. to the fast food and get the grease from the back of the restaurant that's and exactly, dump it into your oil pan that's and then sock Hannah paint. Does. I want to yeah. I want like the DeLorean. I want to take all my trash and throw it into something <laughs> yes. compactor on the back of the when? car. And just go. I when want a hoverboard. You Somebody know. work on that. <laughs> all right, folks. Coming up next week, we have the latest video game news for you, and we're taking you inside Clerks 2. And of course, we're chatting with Kevin Smith. For all the things you saw today and more, go to attackoftheshow.com. It'll have more poontang for you, too. <laughs> Good night. Night, everybody.